सहनावतो सहनो भुनक्तो सह वीर्यम करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिलवेश शांति 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 ओम नम शिवाय 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 सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर ओम नमो भगवते 
ವೈವಸ್ವತಾಯ ಮೃತ್ಯವೇ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ್ಯಾಚಾರ್ಯ ನಚಿಕೇತ ಪರಾಂಚಿಖಾನೀ ವ್ಯತೃಣತ್ಸ್ವಯಂಭೂ ತಸ್ಮಾಪ್ಯತೀನಾಂತರಾತ್ಮನ್ ಕಚಿಧೀರ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮೈಕ್ಷತ್ ಆವೃತ್ತಕ್ಷು ಅಮೃತತ್ವಿಚ್ಛನ್ ಪರಾಚ ಕಾಮನ್ ಅನುಯಂತಿ ಬಾಲೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಯಂತಿ ವಿತತ ಪಾಶ ಅಥ ಧೀರ ಅಮೃತತ್ವ ವಿದಿ ಧ್ರುವಮಧ್ರುವೇಶು ಇಹ ನ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಯಂತೆ ಯಶ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವಲ್ಲಿ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಯಮರಾಜ್ ಸೇಷ್ Svayambhu, the Supreme Lord, Vyatranath, that Lord has killed. Whom did the Lord kill? Paranchi Khani, the sense organs which are extroverted. Hmm. So what is the meaning? The sense organs, the Jnanendriyas, they are supposed to give us knowledge but now the lord has made these sense organs perverted so now they are not able to do their job which are they are supposed to do what is the job which the jnanendriyas are supposed to do they are supposed to give us knowledge jnanam but now they are no more capable of giving us jnanam why because the lord has destroyed them punished them now what is the meaning here the meaning here is our jnanendriyas they are paranchi they are extroverted they know only to look out into the world they are not designed to look within so then what happens when we look out we come to this conclusion that the whole world is perishable we come to this conclusion that i am a mortal being because this is the knowledge which the sense organs will give and also all the conclusions that we have that this world is permanent i come and go i am in this world all these conclusions we have derived by making the sense organs the basis for our knowledge and actually is it knowledge it is not knowledge it is pure delusion and since the sense organs are deluding us so poetically in upanishad it is said these sense organs have been destroyed have been cursed by the lord because of which now these sense organs are misleading the jivatma who is using these sense organs hmm. what is the point the point is if you want to know the reality of this jiva jagat and ishvara sense organs are not the means hmm. and what is the mistake we are all doing the so called great scientists what are they doing the mistake they are doing is they are fi- trying to find the reality of everything by making use of the sense organs 
दृश्य वस्तु इज गिवन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंस दृष्टा इज टोटली इग्नोर्ड दिस इज द मिस्टेक साइंस इज डूइंग the observer is completely ignored the observed phenomena is given the maximum importance the only importance hmm? this is the mistake see how beautifully upanishad is guiding us if you are making the sense organs a basis for your knowledge what you arrive at will not be knowledge it will be pure delusion so poetically it is said here the lord has killed the sense organs and now these dead sense organs if we follow these dead inefficient sense organs what will be our fate we will also die that is the point paranchi khani vyatranat swayam bhuhu tasmat parang pasyati na antaratman now all of us what are we doing in this world now we are looking out we are completely extroverted what are we searching for we are searching for security and happiness how are we searching we are searching through the sense organs are we able to gain it you will never be able to gain it because you are searching in the wrong place security and happiness is not there it is here it is within so therefore kashchid dhira rare few wise ones what do they do avritta chakshu they look within they don't follow the ways of the senses they discard the senses they drop the senses they turn their attention within kashchid very rare few you don't find too many people doing this kashchit means the rarity is indicated there majority are following the wrong path very rare minority are following the right path and they are dheera wise people what are they doing avrutta chakshu what are they searching for amrutatvam ichchan desiring amrutatvam desiring immortality and do they get it of course yes pratyagatmanam aikshat they see it definitely they get it it is not that they are looking within and they are also lost no 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 they get it what is the proof that those who look within get it the greatest proof is these upanishads are still alive <laughs> very many generations of the past they have got it they have gained the benefit from this upanishad therefore they have passed on the scriptures for the next generation if whatever is said in the scriptures if it were to be false untrue then it will not survive we would have discarded them thousands and thousands of years ago these things were revealed to the rishis even today these mantras are available shows that these mantras are valid even today meaning anyone even in this kali yuga if you can do this what are we supposed to do avritta chakshu look within don't go out don't trust the senses they are misleading look within avritta chakshu pay attention to what is happening inside try to find out the inner essence in you and then definitely you will reach what amrutatvam the state of immortality you will come to know who you are you will come to know the nature of the real self it is not this perishable entity it is not this mortal body it is immortal it is divine it is satchit ananda swarupa but for that you will have to go within going within is the way but what happens to those people who go without go outside what happens parachakkaman anyanti bala so here upanishads they call them bala children childish they are 
immature they are they don't know the truth they are childish no knowledge no ability to discriminate they get carried away by the external attractions the superficial pleasures parachakkaman aniyanti they follow the external parachakkaman desirable objects they follow what happens to them te mrityoho yanti they get trapped they get stuck what do they where do they get trapped pasham pasham means snare a trap so they get trapped in this trap in this snare in this noose who has spread out this snare this trap mrityo pasham it is spread out by death himself and where are these traps present where is it in one place or two places no no vitatasya pasham it is there everywhere in this world this trap of death is present everywhere in this world who has laid down this trap the trap is laid down by mrityu himself meaning what anyone who falls into this trap is dead there's no choice so this balaha these childish people unintelligent ones they get attracted by these attractions of the world actually these attractions of the world are all snares laid out by mrityu they get attracted by this glitz and glamour of the world get trapped there and die so this has to be understood what is said here bmi chart is there so what is life according to us according to us we interact with this world what is interaction with the world means sense organs interacting with the sense objects what are the sense objects vastu vyakti and paristhiti vastu thing vyakti being paristhiti paristhiti means situations so this is life we are interacting so what happens to a person who is not educated in scriptures who does he know how to live not exposed to the scriptures what happens to them so this interaction is called karma and this karma leads to what happens when we interact with the things beings and situations somewhere there are some things which give us joy some beings which give us joy some situations which give us joy sukha is there so what is a natural tendency in us when something being or situation give us sukha the natural thing is to get attached to it raga comes anything being or situation now we'll call it sense object so understand whenever i use the term sense object it is thing being or situation so when that sense object is giving me sukha the natural tendency is to have raga towards that object liking towards that object i start liking it anything being or situation whichever gives me joy i start liking it and whichever gives me sorrow i start hating it dvesha is also there raga and dvesha they are the two sides of the same coin those who give me joy i love them those who give me sorrow i hate them now what will be the next step so see this karma as a result of karma phala sukha dukha with this sukha dukha comes raga dvesha now there is raga dvesha in me now what kind of actions i will perform all these actions will be raga dvesha prerita karma that which i like i want more and more that which i dislike i will try to keep it away from my life run away from it 
that which i like i will run towards it so now this raga dvesha in my mind will in turn force me to perform action now what kind of action it will be it will be raga dvesha prerita karma actions which are tainted by raga dvesha instigated by raga dvesha governed by raga dvesha then what happens again the same thing so slowly slowly when i go on interacting with things which i like what happens to this raga in me it becomes very intense it becomes an intense samskara or it becomes an intense vasana a tendency in me it creates an impression in my mind intense impression of raga intense impression of dvesha so the mind is filled with such impressions i am coming in contact with so many things in my life so many people in my life so many situations in my life not everything attracts me not everyone attracts me but there are some few things which attract me there are some few persons which attract me slowly a bundle of vasana is formed in the mind such a mind is called a colored mind colored by ragadvesha colored by samskaras so mind becomes filled with such samskaras now at the time of death what happens yam yam vapismaran bhavam tyajatyante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunteya sada tat bhava bhavitah at the time of death yam yam vapi smaran bhavam bhagwan gives a law of life what is the law at the time of death tyajatyante kalevaram kalevaram means the body when a person is going to leave the body yam yam vapi smaran whatever he remembers at the time of death now what will he remember at the time of death what he will remember is not an accident is not a some stray thing he will remember no he will remember that which will be based on his samskaras in the mind the vasanas in the mind the ragadveshas in the mind that alone will come so bhagwan uses the term tat bhava bhavita these are the thoughts which he had entertained throughout his life again and again he has repeated these thoughts he has repeated these feelings these impressions and now these impressions have become really really deep rooted these ragadveshas so these deep impressions they bubble out they erupt when at the time of death and what is bhagwan saying so these thoughts which he entertains at the time of death will decide his next birth so therefore what does it mean if you are having likes and dislikes to these worldly things being and situations if there is a likes and dislike remember these likes and dislikes are sowing the seed for your next birth in fact you are asking the cosmos i like this oh cosmos give me this is the meaning of liking a thing being or a situation now who are you actually you are paramatma <laughs> so when paramatma so deluded paramatma is called jivatma okay paramatma identified with the body is called jivatma so when jivatma is giving this desire to the cosmos expressing the desire to the cosmos though it is jivatma who is expressing the desire actually it is paramatma who is desiring 
so when paramatma desires can the cosmos the prakriti disobey paramatma <laughs> paramatma is a lord now lord is demanding something cosmos has no choice but to provide whatever he demands so what is he asking so what are we asking when we are entertaining likes and dislikes in this world we may be asking a particular sense object the moment you desire express a desire the law of the cosmos is to fulfill the desire this is the law of the cosmos so when i am liking something i am telling the cosmos that i want that particular sense object now see this oet object emotions thought i am asking the cosmos give me this sense object give me these emotions give me these thoughts o e t i am demanding it now if i am demanding a sense object cosmos will have to give me sense organs to interact with the sense object sense organs have to be given but sense organs alone cannot be given you will have to be given a body you will have to be given a body to interact with the sense objects you will have to be given a mind to interact with the emotions to entertain those emotions you will have to be given an intellect to entertain the thoughts in short you will have to be given a bmi in order to interact in the world of oet such an interactor who is with his bmi who is interacting with the oet is called pft the experiencer the one who is experiencing the world of oet is called as pft perceiver feeler thinker jeevatma so every time i am expressing a desire desire for the world cosmos will have to fulfill it by giving me a body this giving me a body is called as punarapi jananam rebirth i will have to be born so literally speaking when i am expressing a worldly desire what i am what am i expressing i am expressing the desire to be reborn and now whoever is born will have to die so whenever i am expressing a worldly desire i am expressing my desire to die <laughs> that is why it is called mrutyoho vitatasya pasham yanti he is falling into the trap of death because he is not asking for birth he is asking for death because death is a final reality of every birth isn't it ending is more important not beginning a football match in the beginning you are winning but in the end you lost so finally you have won or lost <laughs> in the end what happens that's the most important thing that's the final reality who is having the last laugh <laughs> right see how beautifully upanishad is taking hmm? bala childish people they alone will entertain worldly desires and try to fulfill their worldly desires because they don't know they are falling into the trap the trap of death laid out laid out by death they are born only to die actually when we think that if we are having the desirable object i'll be happy are death is it misery or happiness <laughs> when you are seeking a desire or object you are seeking misery balaha they see the pleasure of interaction with the object but dhiraha what do they see they don't see the pleasure they see the end result what is the end result death so therefore atha dhiraha the wise people amrutatvam dhruvam viditva having known that there is a possibility to attain that supreme 
which is free from birth and death which is free from all these kinds of miseries which is free from you know uh, imperfections amrutattvam viditva having known this how did they know they knew it through the scriptures they knew it through satsang from guru etc viditva such a possibility exists there is an option to escape all this i can escape this coming back again and again to this world what do they do this amrutattvam itself is dhruvam iti viditva whatever is immortal alone is real alone is permanent what can give me happiness is not the impermanent thing only the permanent thing can give me permanent happiness iti viditva thoroughly understanding this great truth that reality which is ever existing alone can give me true happiness thus knowing what do they do iha in this world adhruveshu na prarthayante na prarthayante they don't desire they don't seek what adhruveshu adhruvam which is impermanent they don't seek this impermanent world the impermanent objects they are very clear prarthayante is the term used prarthana means what <laughs> you are praying you are desiring you are seeking every prarthana of jeevatma will come true na prarthayante intelligent seeking is called prarthana sincere seeking is called prarthana it need not be intelligent but it is sincere that is called as prarthana but the wise people having gained this knowledge of the scriptures their desires are guided by the knowledge of the scriptures is very important what is de- what is guiding our desires because your desires are going to come true what are you desiring it's very important if you are desiring calamity that will happen so the scriptures are warning us don't desire something inauspicious because that is come to pass that will come to pass desire what is auspicious right you see the whole bmi chart is based on vasana so we what is this vasana the ragadvesha who created it i myself with my unintelligent contact with the world i have created this vasanas and what has happened when this vasana come that supreme om that supreme lord infinite immortal sachidananda swarupa om now becomes what pft who is this pft none other than om polluted by vasanas who is this pft that om identified with the bmi that is this pft going through experience in the oet so why should we study the scriptures we should study the scriptures because at present we are at the bmi level and this can go on and on and on and on we have to put an end to it how to put an end stop desiring the world start desiring the lord in you if you desire god you get god if you desire world you get world devan devaya jo yanti pitrun yanti pitruvrata bhutani yanti bhutejya mad bhakta yanti mamapi whatever you desire you get this is the law of this universe the worshipper of the devatas they go to devalokas the worship of the pitras they go to pitraloka the worshipers of the bhutas the elements fine they go to such worlds but my devotees they come to me right antakale cha mameva smaran mu प्रयाति याति नास्त्यत्र संशयः एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ 
అంతకాలి చ మామేవ స్మరణ్ రిమంబరింగ్ మీ ముక్వా కళేవరం ద వన్ హూ లీవ్స్ అ బాడీ స ప్రయాతి మద్ భావం హీ అటైన్స్ టు మై నేచర్ నాస్తి అత్ర సంశయ దర్ ఇస్ నో డౌట్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ at the time of death who remembers me and leaves a body he will reach me so all our effort is for that let us develop such samskaras which will make us effortlessly remember god at the time of death how to do it throughout your life you have to practice you have to make that vasana remembering god vasana you have to make it intense and then this vasana will effortlessly spring out at the time of death then there is no problem how to do it bhagwan so the next verse is a verse on meditation vedantic meditation earlier it is said avrutta chakshu looking within what is it how to practice it what is this looking within is it looking inside heart liver kidney is it <laughs> no 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 what is this avrutta chakshu so some explanation has to be given so that is given in verse number 3 ena roopam rasam gandham శబ్దాన్ స్పర్శాంచ మైథునాజాతి కిమత్ర పరిశిష్యతేతైత టుగెదర్ ూపం రసం గంధం శబ్దాన్ స్పర్శాంశ మైథునాజాతి కిమత్ర పరిశిష్యతేతైత విత్ విచ్ విజానాతి యూ కమ్ టు నో that which with which you come to know what do i come to know these experiences rupam rupam means form how do you experience form i see it yes that with which you see rupam and experience the form rasam that with which you experience taste gandham smell shabdan the sounds maithunan the sexual pleasures how do you experience it ete naiva vijanati you know it by this only kimatra parishishyate what else is there to know meaning there is nothing else to know you just know this that is enough what does it mean now that with which you know the shabda sparsha roopa rasagandha that is it oh is it the mind then it is the mind with which i know all this no so you have to be very careful with this verse it can be misunderstood as the mind it is not the mind etad vaitat nachiketa what you are asking is this this indeed is that tat etat that which you are asking is this now we have to, have to be very careful with these verses so now what is being talked about is consciousness here so that consciousness what does it do it makes the body sentient how does it make the body sentient not directly but through the mind so the first conscious consciousness enlivens the mind 
actually mind is matter because it is made of five elements it is actually matter it is inert but consciousness enlivens the mind and now the mind is able to think it is able to entertain thoughts and now the mind appears to be alive sentient actually it is not its property it is a borrowed property borrowed from consciousness just like when you heat a metal the metal becomes hot that heat in the metal is a borrowed property borrowed from fire so in the same way the mind's ability to think the mind's ability to become aware they are all borrowed property borrowed from consciousness consciousness these properties are natural to it it is its swabhava swadharma because chit is the swadharma of consciousness being sentient this particular property is borrowed by the mind now the mind appears sentient mind appears conscious now this mind passes on that property to the sense organs now the sense organs appear conscious for example the eyes they appear to be alive they appear to be living actually that life doesn't belong to the eyes it is belonging to consciousness mind borrows it and passes on that borrowed property to the sense organs now the sense organs appear alive and this sense organ the eye let us say now it is conscious of rupam a form so what is the statement we say the eyes are conscious of the form so what is this verse saying that with which the eyes are conscious pay attention to that generally what is the mistake we do the eyes are conscious of a form we pay attention to the form what is the upanishad asking us to do don't pay attention to the form pay attention to that consciousness in the light of which you are able to be conscious of that form shift your attention that's all what is needed hmm. so do this with every transaction in the world rupam rasam gandham there are all the transactions don't pay attention to the object pay attention to the consciousness in the light of which you are conscious of the object that's all it is just paying attention instead of paying attention to the object pay attention to the subject instead of paying attention to the drushya vastu pay attention to the drashta instead of paying attention to the ob- observed object pay attention to the observer this is a meditation this is called as avrutta chakshu now you understood <laughs> avrutta chakshu is not putting your eyes somewhere on top and you know <laughs> mm-hmm. it's all paying attention it has nothing to do with the eyes chakshu is there avrutta chakshu mm. take out the bulb and put it ulta and put it no 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 <laughs> avrutta chakshu it's all about paying attention to the source there is something which is happening at the outer level but your attention is not at the external object your attention is upon the internal subject 
This is Vedantic meditation. And remember, when you are doing this, only you know that you are doing it. <laughs> it is a subjective experience. Other person will never know. Yes or no? Yes. Spirituality is always silent. Spiritual sadhana is always silent. You don't show it to others. You know it. Full stop. Other person never knows. He is also saying, ah, he is interacting. Just like I am interacting, a jnani is also interacting. In what way jnani is different from atnyani? There is a huge difference. <laughs> you see, many times we also do this in the world, you know. You are looking at the scene, but your attention is upon something unseen. For example, you want to know whether electricity is there or not. You look at the bulb. You switch on and look at the bulb. The bulb is glowing. You are looking at the bulb, but where is your attention? Upon unseen electricity, isn't it? You are looking at the seen bulb, but your attention is upon the unseen electricity. You see? Looking continues. You are looking at the bulb only. But attention is somewhere else. You are looking at the mirror. You are looking into the mirror only, no doubt. But where are you actually looking? You are looking out only to look within. You see? This is Vedantic meditation. You are looking at the object, but the purpose of looking at the object is not to get trapped in the object. No. The purpose of looking at the object is to shift the attention to the subject. Are you able to follow what I am saying? The object is a springboard. To reach the subject. You know that springboard, all this swimmers, etc., they do. There's a board there. They jump. They go down only to come up. <laughs> Use the object to go back to the subject. You throw the ball onto the wall. For what? So that the ball will come back. It appears that you are going out, but actually you are not going out, you are going in. It's called as Avritta Chakshu. Now, this sadhana will be impossible if there is Raga Dvesha for the object in front. Yes or no? You are looking at the object only to come back to the subject, but you get stuck in the object. <laughs> like as though the ball is thrown on a you know wet clay wall. It's stuck there. It doesn't bounce back. You see? A thing being or a situation, a person whom you love very much, it is impossible that you can do this meditation. It's just not possible. The mind gets dragged into the object. You lose your center. You get stuck in the object. Subject is completely forgotten. Forgot, forgetting the subject means what? Forgetting the observer means forgetting God. At that moment, God is not important for you. World is important for you. This is called as God forgetfulness or self forgetfulness. That object becomes so important. It's all because of Ragadvesha that I forget the Lord. This is called spiritual fall. This is spiritual fall. And what is the end result of spiritual fall? Punarapi Jananam. Or 
are you able to understand so which is easy meditation meditation keeping the object in front or meditation without the object <laughs> so therefore in the 6th chapter of bhagavad gita what is said generally the instruction given in bhagavad gita is tasmat tvam indriyanyadau niyamya bharatarshabha first thing is if there is something or some being which is really pulling my attention away keep away from that object this is the first step <laughs> okay exactly like when you want to learn driving you don't learn driving in the thick of the traffic where do you learn driving where there is no vehicle isn't it empty ground you learn driving in the same way for the beginners start doing this meditation where you know in solitude where there are no sense objects then you close your eyes sit down sense objects are not there to distract you so the possibility of a successful meditation is greater when you are alone right but as you advanced in meditation as your jnana bhakti vairagya becomes intense even amidst sense objects you are undisturbed you are centered you are not pulled away from your center now this is called as advanced level yogarato va bhogarato va sangarato va sangavihina yasya brahmani ramate chittam nandati 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 va that's at advanced stage yogarato va bhogarato whether the person is in yoga or bhoga whether with sense objects or without sense objects with people or without people nandati 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 yasya brahmani ramate chittam the mind is abiding in that brahman the truth abiding in brahman means what abiding in the self abiding in consciousness the attention is always there not going away and there is nobody to take that attention away why because there are no objects of ragadvesha and therefore there is no there is no force which can separate him from the self what is his experience nandati 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 why nandati the nature of the self is ananda swarupa so therefore if you are abiding in ananda swarupa atma ananda alone should be your experience right you see e na roopam rasam gandham shabdan sparshan samai thunan e te naiva vijanati ki matra parishishya what else is there finished over <laughs> now this meditation who can do should you be a sanyasi no everyone can do this isn't it caste creed nationality gender religion everyone can do this because self is there in everyone hmm? mind is also there with everyone your job is only to shift your attention to that awareness in the light of which you are aware of the world this is the whole of spirituality and once you start giving importance to this awareness you become awareness that is called as liberation and the awareness is such it is always there right there is something which can be done by everyone not only it can be done by everyone it can be done any time yes or no should you do it only in brahma murta 
early morning 4 o'clock no any time this meditation can be done so for the beginners how to practice see in the beginning don't try to practice with things beings and situations where intense raga dvesha is you just cannot practice for example nice food is there which you love it try to practice this <laughs> remember you will have to give up the joy of eating to experience the joy of abidance both cannot come together the joy of eating has to be sacrificed in order to gain the joy of abidance which is just impossible for a beginner so therefore how to practice this things being in situation where there is no intense raga dvesha you try to practice this that is how you begin there are so many places where you are not very much attached to the person or the thing or you are doing something taking bath etc all during at that time where there is no too intense of attachment just be aware just be aware of what you are doing what is that we generally do when you are doing something multitasking happens isn't it <laughs> Oh, I should do this. I should go there. Oh, I think this is the way to do. You are doing something else in the present, but your mind is wandering either in the past or the future. Stop it. Be in the present. This is how you practice this. Again and again, bring the mind back to the present. What are you doing? Pay attention. Be aware of what you are doing. Be conscious of what you are doing. Consciously do what you are doing. without allowing the mind to go here and there this is a practice you will be amazed if you can do this your mind will be extremely peaceful and moreover you will be extremely efficient in what of you are doing because you are there what you are doing this is a very practical tip actually the first stage is just pay attention to what you are doing and the advanced stage is you just be aware of the awareness in the light of which you just be aware of what you are doing that's another stage but the first step is this be aware of what you are doing are you able to follow what i am saying that's why they say be in the present be in the here and now just be conscious or as conscious living not allowing the mind to go here and there the moment mind goes bring it back be in here what am i doing this forms a basis of zen meditation you know but actually all those things are there here <laughs> they gave some nice words that's all but it's all there here be aware of what you're doing be consciously aware be in the present so now can you say that no no i don't get time to meditate can you say this <laughs> every moment you can meditate in the kitchen also when you are cutting the vegetable can you meditate or not of course yes be consciously aware of what you are doing don't think of what i am going to cook tomorrow <laughs> Vegetables or over? No, I should go to the market now. What you are doing? Just pay attention, and you will always find that you will never commit mistakes. You know, adding too much of salt and all that. Never will it happen. <laughs> Just wait. Sometimes they put for salt and they forget. Second time again they put. <laughs> it is all because of lack of awareness. It's all because you are not in the present. so the present moment is not registered in the mind because you were never in the present you were either in the future or the past and because it was not registered you don't know what you have done and because you have not you don't know what you have done you keep doing the wrong thing hmm? you see all right more of it we will see tomorrow ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चिद दुःख भाग भवेत असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृत गमय ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ